Hello everyone. In this video we're going to go over some of the basic definitions we need for asymptotic notation. This should be rather quick because we most likely have seen all of these before. So let's begin by looking at our definition for what we're going to call big O. Big O is going to try to help us to capture the concept of one function being larger than another. So what we're going to say is that some function we know about, we're using f of n here to talk about the function we know about, is bounded above in some sense by a different function g of n. So f of n is our smaller function and g of n is our bigger function. So how do we do that? Well we want to capture one idea which is the fact that it's bigger but we also want to capture the fact that it doesn't really matter a whole lot if one function starts off a little bit higher than another and then one suddenly overtakes it for the rest of time. So what we're going to do that is we're going to have one concept which is this sort of n naught that appears in our definition that is designed to capture the idea that eventually one function will be, will be bigger than the other and then we have something else involved in the definition which is this constant c which is used to capture the idea of if we have two parabolas they're similar but there might be some constants i need to add to fudge it to make it so that they actually look the same so Let's talk about an actual example of what I mean. We might have 4n squared plus 3. And one way we could bound this above in a way like we see there is we could say it's less than or equal to 5n squared. And then the astute student might notice that that's not actually true because if I plug in n equals 0, I get that 3 is less than or equal to 5, so that's not true. If I plugged in 1, I would get 7 less than or equal to 5. That's not true. So if we plug in 2, maybe we, we notice we get 16 plus 9, 19 on the left, and then 20 on the right, so it seems to be true after a while. So in this case, maybe we would have n sub 0 equals 2, and we our constant c would be 5. We take some uglier function, 4n squared plus 3, and bound it by a nicer function, 5n squared. That is our idea for big O. This is the idea of bounding above, which we'll write down. And exactly like we can have an idea of bounding above, we're also going to have an idea of bounding below, and that is big omega. It is exactly the same. In fact, you could copy paste everything, change an O to an omega, and replace the inequality at the very end. What was previously f of n less than or equal to c g of n is now f of n greater than or equal to c g of n. The exact same thing. To repeat what we did before, let's quickly write down that same function 4n squared plus 3 is greater than or equal to 4n squared. If I add 3 to something, I make it bigger. So I can make it smaller by not adding the 3 anymore. In this case, our n sub 0, sometimes called n naught, would be 0, because this is always true. I could subtract 4n squared from both sides of the inequality, and it, it would simply claims that 3 is greater than or equal to 0. And last time I checked, that seemed to be true. Our constant here is going to be 4. So our first observation up above is that 4n squared plus 3 is in. It is a member of the set big O of n squared. The second observation from our big omega part is that 4n squared plus 3 is in big omega of n squared. Notice I don't include that constant 5 and that constant 4. Those are part of the definition. The function g of n does not inherently have those constants appearing in it. So the first definition, the one for big O, is designed to help us capture the idea that we are growing no faster than g of n. The second definition, big omega, is to capture the idea of growing at least as fast as. So we're growing no faster than a, a uh, 
quadratic function, and we're growing no slower than a quadratic function. It would be nice if we had an idea to describe growing about the same rate as a quadratic function. Conveniently we do, and that notation is our theta notation. The theta notation is simply encapsulating the idea of being in both big O and in big omega. It looks very similar, again copy pasting would work really well here, but this time we have two constants, c1 and c2. We need two constants because we're talking about being in two different sets, big O and big omega. If we look at the first part of our inequality, we have c1 g of n less than or equal to f of n. That is the exact same inequality as the big omega definition. We've just swapped the order. The c g of n is on the small side of the inequality. The f of n is on the big side of the inequality. Similarly, the second part of that inequality, f of n less than or equal to c2 g of n, is showing that f of n is in big O of g of n. So this is designed to ca capture the idea of growing about the same rate as grows about the same rate. That is what big o theta is trying to capture for us, being both in big O and in big omega. And again, the definition is just stapling together the other two definitions. We have two other definitions which can be helpful if you're trying to be lazy for notation. Uh, one is common, the other one is semi-rare. So I will mention both for completeness and so that we can use them in the future to be lazy. So the fourth definition there is little o. It is the exact same as big O, except it requires that it is not in big omega of that function. Similarly, we have a little omega, which is it being in big omega, but not in big O. These can be thought of in a loose sense. This doesn't work in all cases, but as a rough idea in your head, it can be helpful to think of bound the big O as less than or equal to, big omega as greater than or equal to, theta as approximately equal to, little o as being less than, and a little omega as being greater than. So we have five different sets designed to capture those five different inequality ideas. We will primarily be using big O, big omega, and big theta, and we will, in different applications, be able to use these different sets to describe different things.